Good day, everybody. This is Bryce from Victims the Victors, where we tell our stories, how we overcame the storms, trials, and tribulations, and how we overcame so you know that you can overcome and that you are, are also a victor if you choose so. Today's guest, like, I, I don't really have, like, all day to read everything that she's done because <laughs> <laughs> we got we going to have some time. So I'm going to just read a little bit because I don't want to mess it up. So I got it written down here. So we got a lot. We got a lot to go through, y'all. <laughs> so a high school dropout, then got a GED, then above all, after all this, went homeless with six children, Lord Jesus, unemployment. And, and that's that's hard by itself. We got six kids unemployed and homeless. Lord, yeah. Yeah. but you're a 13 time published author, so you didn't stop education there, huh? <laughs> you're an obviously a side off international speaker, pub, um, featured on magazines, regional um, media outlets have, have sought you out, had you on their shows. The city of Atlanta has 2020, I believe it was, was your emerging leader. Um, the city of Atlanta said this, and you got your doctorate in leadership studies. Like, come on, come on. <laughs> I, th I left this one for the last because I think this is the most, th mind you, there's a lot, y'all. There's a lot. Yeah. But this one for me, it, it was probably the highest accomplishment. 2020 National Mother of the Year. Like, please, hey, amen. Hey, amen, man. Today... I'm so, so thankful to have you on today, man. Like, <laughs> to have a woman with your, with your background, to say, hey, you know what? I'm not giving up. Yeah. I've had storms. I've had troubles in my life. But today, Dr. Holden, you, you, you have you, you've arrived. You, you, you've succeeded in life. And obviously, you're not stopping here. How are you doing today? I'm well. Thank you for having me. Man, man, like... So is there any, like, there's, 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 there's like a thousand more things. Like, do you, do you get tired? Like, <laughs> I, I, you know what? I, I do. Matter of fact, um, to be honest with you, COVID night, when, when everything shut down, it definitely gave me a chance to rest. Um, within the last 12 years, I went from, like you said, I went from being homeless. So I was 35 years old mm -hmm. with a GED, six kids and homeless. So I went from being homeless in the streets of Atlanta for close to four years to run for city council in the 2017 election from a GED to a doctor degree in leadership studies and wrote 13 books. And I released my first comic book last year. Hey, so, okay. Yeah. Oh. It's, 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 it's been a journey. It, you were 35. 35. 30. So, you know, wow. the mental shift that had to take place for me was almost because I had, I dropped out in the 10th grade and mm. I had four kids by the time I was 22. So to be 35 years old mm. and homeless with a GED with six kids, man, that, that, that was, that was, I tell you, I, I, I'm still shocked at what God has done. Mm. That was a lot to accomplish within the last 12, 13 years. It was a lot to accomplish. Um, and, and, and not only just that, the lessons that I taught my six children, you know, about servant leadership. Now they're serving as leaders as well. Oh, really? Yeah. I, when we was homeless, hmm. right before we got into the, just the deepness of homelessness, where we was living in shelters. And uh, as a matter of fact, when I rode in college, we was living in a board of houses squatters. So what I did to save them from the streets, the gangs, the um, school, to prison pipeline, mm -hmm. I taught them how to give back. And so uh, when we didn't have anything, they turned around and my oldest son, he's 31. And he said, mother, my well giving back is going to the Marine Corps. He served 10 and a half mm -hmm. years in Marines. He's a second year college student. Another son became a caretaker. A daughter became an EMT, a licensed pharmacy tech. She's in her third year of college. My daughter joined the army three years ago. She graduated last year with her bachelor's. My 19 year old daughter is a four time published author, entrepreneur, and she just created and launched her first tabletop game for children. And my youngest son, Omega. Mm. Omega is a senior in high school youth athlete, youth leader. So, um, yeah, to teach, to see what they have done with the little principal, with the principles that I taught them when we didn't have anything is just an honor for God to allow me to see this time. 
<laughs> yep. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, I, I can speak now. I can talk. I can talk all day, but that that's speechless. That that right there, that's all the glory to God. Now, I, I'm, I just picked up a book, and I'm sure you've heard about it. I'm sure you heard the author, Bishop T.D. Jakes. Yes. And he's talking about the crushing place. Mm. The crushing place makes the gemstones and the pearls and the goodness, <laughs> if we see it now, if we take hold of it. And, mm. and my gosh, I can't help. I can't help but to see that. Just like when you were saying this and when I was reading over, I was just like, oh, my Lord, this <laughs> this woman took turn turn what what the, the world and what circumstances made up for your harm, made it for the good now. And pff, wow. 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 Yeah. If, if we can, I'd just like to, to go back, go back to um, where you where, where you obviously you're um, you said Atlanta raised. Or Atlanta born? Yes. B b born and raised in Atlanta. Okay. So, and then what was the, the conversation in the households? So you're grade nine. You know, obviously you understand what's going on in the house. You, you, you see what's going on in the society. What was the conversation like at home? Was it go to college, get into university, or is it just like stay out of trouble, like do the best you can? Like what was that conversation like? Well, you know, I I felt like I'm the oldest of three girls. I think I got off track for me. I was raised in a two parent household. Mm. Um, I was treated more like the stepsister in the Cinderella story. So, oh. you know, I I was a stepsister. Well, I was treated like that, and so I just got off track. You know, I just felt unloved by my parents. Like nothing I did was good enough. Like I just always had to keep trying to prove myself, and so that's how I dropped out in the tenth grade. And, you know, and I had my first child a week before my 17th birthday. But, um, yeah, I, I, and I think I just started searching in all the wrong places, relationships and who am I? You know, because I, my, my view of who I was was you're not good enough. You're not worthy. There's nothing about you, no matter how hard. And I was the daughter that loved my parents deeply. Mm. And um, and so the rejection from them really just ate at me. It just it just ate, you know, I. And I just got off track. But when I found myself homeless with my children at 35, and at that time I had two kids in high school, two kids in middle school, and two kids in elementary. Mm. So when you say I was spread thin mentally, so not only did I, I had to keep myself encouraged, mm. I'm running on fumes because now I got, I got these kids I got to pour into. I barely have enough energy to pour into myself but I knew uh, no one was coming to save us. Mm -hmm. And I knew I was the only one. If some, if change was going to happen, it was going to come through me. So I just, man, when we lived in that board up house as squatters, I just knew I had to do something to change the trajectory of my family. Man, I, I can relate, honestly, un unfortunately. And I was homeless as well with my children. We had five at the time. But in Canada, we're more of a socialist country, right? So, like, the government has every and all possible help towards you. You know, you got it. So we yeah. were kind of fortunate because, you know, we were in a hotel, right? And uh, it was like a motel, like a Motel 6 type of thing, right? And mm -hmm. we had, like, the government paying, right, for our hotel mm -hmm. looking for a place. Now, you're saying you were in, in um, a board-up house, and yes. Like I, I've seen, like I've seen some videos of people driving through, and it's it's not one. It's not like a, like safe looking. <laughs> like I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm they're just looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> and so what got me through? I kept saying this saying, the saying, the saying, step by step, day by day, have faith in the Lord, and He'll lead you. He'll guide my way. When and and that was with me and my wife. Were you with yeah. her, the children's father at the time, or was it just you? It was just me. And I think that's what made the journey. Um, it, it, it was hard. I mean, at that point, four years, we talking four years, we talking about shelters, cars, abandoned house. Um, someone moved out of the apartment. You know, when people move out of their apartment, they leave a junkie. I just asked the lady, can I stay there one night? Um, me and the kids. So it, it, it was, it was a pull. I think the most for me as a parent, Mm -hmm. It was the humiliation, you know, um, to be honest with you, I'm getting hit twice. So I'm getting rejected by family. You know, they're laughing at me. And then I have my kids 
the older four, they wanted stuff. You know, it was the, yeah. what's wrong with us? What's, why is this happening to us? So it's like, okay, I'm, I'm sinking. I'm, I'm sinking. I'm up underwater. Yeah. This, this, I want to give a visualization. I'm up under the water with a little too breathing and I'm trying to safely get my kids above water to shore, to the shore safely. Yeah. And so that was, that was my goal. And, um, I, I think the so like you said when you read the a little bit of my bio to become George well Georgian mother of the year and then they say God said no I'm gonna do a little better for you I'm gonna name you I was chosen as National Mother of the Year by American Mothers Inc. and I made I was the 85th woman in the United States history to ever hold that title and you can't that's God 12 years ago I was only known as the homeless woman with six mm -hmm. kids. The only people knew me was the welfare office. Twelve years later, I'm representing the world as national. Mother. You can't. Only God can do that. Only God can take you from a nobody to make you nationally known. I'm, you know. So I, I, I'm just still in awe of all he's done. <laughs> How? You know, when when I had to look my child in the eye, and they were, and he was, he was like six at the time and say, mm -hmm. I can't, we're not going back to your bed. We're not going, at six, mm -hmm. how, when you got high school, they know, they know yes. so exactly yes. what's going on, you know? And how, like, what, what was the, what was the thing that was pushing you to go another day to, to keep going, man? What was the, what was that thing? Well, I had 12 eyes watching me and I knew I had, so I have three sons and three daughters. So I have 12 eyes. They was watching me, but you know what? The journey got so hard. I remember um, here in Georgia, it's a hospital and I walked into the hospital because I, as a pastor, I'm an ordained pastor. I often pose the question, what happens when your struggle outlasts your strength? We all can go through something for a couple of days, a couple of weeks, even some months. But what happens when it become years? So for me, the journey got so hard being home. And you got to understand, I'm a full time college student. So, and so my, I was homeless too. We was homeless two years before I enrolled in college, two years during my undergrad. And so, but the journey got so hard. I walked into a hospital here in Riverdale, Georgia. And when I walked in, I went to the front desk. I said, ma'am, I don't think I could do this anymore. She said, ma'am, are you saying you want to commit suicide? I said, yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm, I'm tired. I, I'm, I mean, and they kept me for a week for observation. And the week they kept me there on that floor, they had a padded room. Now I wasn't raised in the church. I did not have a relationship with God, but this is where God and I began to meet. Mm. I asked the lady on that floor, I said, ma'am, can I go into that room? She said, ma'am, you're no threat to anybody. I said, I know, but I need to go into that room. The week that I was there, I dropped down to my knees once a day. I'm going to, God help me. Are you there? I don't have anything. I'm scared and I'm lost. Mm. But when they released me from the hospital after a week of observation, although my situation did not change immediately, I knew something was different. Mm. And before I knew it, I had matriculated through college with my associates, my bachelor's, my MBA. Mm. But when I got accepted into the PhD program for leadership studies, now I did want to bungee jump up to heaven and high five my man. <laughs> I did want to run to jump on them like, yes. We did it. We did it. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> Studying, homeless, mother, no job. No job. Just incredible. Yeah. And you were able to take that breath. You, you see, you, I, I, see yes. I, I felt that one. I felt that one. Yes. Was, you see, mm. Don't okay, man. I could get into praying right now, boy. I, I, oh my goodness, I'm able to take. I'm finally giving myself the oxygen mm. that I gave my children, mm. so they can make it to the shore safely. I'm I'm just now able to say it's done. Wow, mm. wow. I mean, you know, mm. to to be 48 years old and to see all, and I've never had to visit. The, the jails, the criminal system, mm. gangs, my kids. Now, only God. I, we was in the most vulnerable position. Only God could help my family 
Well, I didn't have to, my kids just straight to the streets, to the drugs, the gang, and they all are leading as servant leaders. Only God can do that. Oh. Only God. <laughs> Only God. Only That's God. Cool. Praise yeah. the Lord. <laughs> now, so when you're going through your tests, like the, I, I only went to high school now, and boy, I wasn't good. I was a wrestler. I was a wrestler. <laughs> 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 That's what I was. Yeah, yeah. And um, the, the 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 Jamaican community would say I'm a gallus at that time. And so so the female <laughs> and the wrestling, all I did. That's all I cared about. Okay. I didn't care about nothing else. And they they try to get me in with these like these these pieces of paper called um exams. Yeah. I don't know about that stuff. <laughs> so, now you're dealing with all this stuff and then the exams. How do you focus and like like baby crying, I'm sure they're a little bit hungry sometimes. And then we still got to, you know, like not have the the water drip. <laughs> what was the, like your your last exam? Like you're sitting down, you're about to get your doctorate. This is that they, that exam. Like you finishing. What was that exam like? Well, let me be honest with you how I received my doctorate. Um, a year into the PhD program, I got a call into the office. And the dean of the program said, well, Latarsh, we got good news and bad news. Um, bad news is you have been in school 10 years, full time. So after I got my MBA, I did a year of the Master of Divinity. And I did, a, and I was a year into my PhD program. He said, so you have exhausted your funds, so you will not be able to complete the PhD program. He said, but you have over 240 credit hours. So whatever you're trying to do, you have enough credit hours. And I remember walking out of there with my head down. And six months later, I got, I'm at the hair salon. I get a call from Dr. Carton Davis, president of G. Moore Theological Institute. Mm -hmm. And I'm up on the drive. He say, um, yes. I, I answer the phone. He said, can I speak to Dr. Holden? I say, sir, I did not finish the PhD program. I had like a year or something left. He said, Dr. Holden. He did a little chuckle. He said, Dr. Ho, this is Dr. Carton Davis, president of GMO Theological Institute. Let me ask you a couple of questions before I tell you what I want to tell you. He said, is it true that you led a family of six plus yourself out of homelessness and all of your children are leaders? They're serving the military, college students, authors. I said, yes, sir. He says, is it also true that you're now running for city council <laughs> fighting for others? I said, yes, sir. He says, is it also true that you wrote 12 books? I said, yes, sir. He said, then my staff did research we see the newspaper articles where you taught your six children how to be servant leaders. He, I said, yes, sir. He said, Dr. Holden, we're not giving you anything. God has favored you. You have exemplified what leadership is. Mm. You will be receiving your doctorate degree in leadership studies. He said, it's not a dissertation that you could have research that could have showed the leadership magnitude that you have and that's how, and I tell you, I came with a bun that dryer at the house line, hit the floor, and I just start crying, praising God. He said, God has favored you. We're not giving you anything. You have earned this. And, and, and so for me, you know, God was letting me know that he was with me the whole time. Mm. Mm. You know, he was with me, yeah. That, that is, and, and you know what, to, to, to understand that, like, Tests in life are not just on paper. Like that, yes. that, that's a part, that's a part. Don't get twisted. That is, that is a yeah. yeah. But the the when you go to sleep and when you when you have those dreams at night that some may call nightmares, but um mm. that's your life. Yeah. <laughs> and you're still carrying on, that's a test. Yeah. And it's that's a test. Man, that's how you manage that and how you deal with that. Is gonna see if you pass or fail, and and I, clearly, you don't understand what failing is. <laughs> <laughs> you don't understand what giving up is. <laughs> you don't fight. You don't fight that good fight. And some it's a real fight. <laughs> it's a real fight. You, you had a marine. You had an army soldier inside of you, and you gonna say, "I ain't a fighter. I'm a fighter, boy." Oh, exactly. That's why he was like, Dr. Holden, I mean, it's, it's, you know, and it's fine, you know, at first, and I thought my other PhD fellow students, they was like, we're not mad at you because <laughs> <laughs> we, you, you, I mean, it's not a paper that you could have written. He was like, who would come out of homeless and go into politics? 
Mm. Who come out of homelessness and write 12 books? Who come out? Um, yes, Dr. Holden, you earned that. We're not mad at you. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to do our dissertation, but God did it for you. Where you're, He used that last year of everything. I mean, that was a dissertation. That, that, if, if, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So God, exactly. So, and um, that was my dissertation. He said that your life was your research paper. That, that I mean, you was getting a PhD in leadership studies and I mean, we just couldn't figure out, you know, that, I mean, so yeah. So um, it's like those moments that God is letting me know I'm with you, daughter. I see you, you know? And so, like you said, for my kids to be serving in military, college students, authors, and God has not only, God has taken it further. Right before Christmas, I was able to witness my nine-year-old grandson become an author. So now my children's children, so you saw that I'm, I'm like, oh, woo. now my children's children are being blessed because I was the generational curse breaker. Had, mm. had I gave oh. up and I'm trying not to go there, but he said, had he gave up in the wilderness. Mm. He said, see, that's why you, you got to stay. You got to, if you if I had given up in the wilderness, I would not have been able to see the fruit for my children. Now, their children mm -hmm. of, of walking in the, in the path. And, and the, I'm like, my God. Mm. Because I stayed faithful being homeless, no matter who laughed at us, who talked about us, who, you know, um, Dr. Miles Monroe said adversity introduces man or woman to themselves. And so adversity yes. had mm. introduced yes. me to myself, Yes, you know. And so when people say, well, Dr. Holden, what made you run for city council? Well, uh, um, Nelson Mandela has said that how could he enjoy the limited freedom that he had when his sisters and brothers are not free? God did not bring me that far so I could act like I don't supposed to go back and do nothing else for other people. I had a moral duty first to liberate my family and once I liberated them, now I had a duty to go out and try to liberate others. Look what the Lord has done. <laughs> hey, look what the Lord I just... I feel that in my spirit. <laughs> that, that's that's our job, though. That's our job. That's our job. You know, we, I, I just want to get on a praise break and just start praising the Lord. <laughs> and, and, there's there's a lot of people that's mm -hmm. been in, and, and so the the re, one of the reasons why I even started this is. Because I, I've been through things in my life. I was molested, see my, my, my mama get her get beaten up, seen all this stuff. I've been in prison, I've I've been homeless, I, I, all these things, right? And I, now I gave my life to Christ Jesus, accepting him as my Lord and Savior. And God's like, hey, go back. Mm. Go back. I'm like, what you mean? I I, I like it here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like it here. I, I don't know. I don't know. And my children were watching on VeggieTales talking about Jonah and the whale. God was showing mm. Jonah to go over here. And he didn't want to go. He wanted nobody. Mm -mm, I don't want that. <laughs> I, <Yeah. laughs> I don't want that now. <laughs> and it's so important and powerful when it's somebody that just has a heart, just has a heart for a situation. Never, yeah. never yeah. been in it, but just has a heart for it and, you know, expresses their love and their joy through their works and, and tries to help people. But it changes mm. everything, the trajectory of people's lives, the concept, the the, the fathom that people, the, the 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 stuff that people think in their mind when they say, "Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, you been here too?" Mm. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. You you know what I'm talking about? Because mm. I remember when I was when I was molesting, my mom brought me to this counselor, and she said this one thing that I was five, six years old. I walked out there clean by my damn self. And she said, I understand. I was like, oh, so you were molested just as a child, just like you were molested yeah. too? Oh, man. She's like, no. I'm like, <laughs> what you talking about? You exactly. Understand. What'd you understand, though? Exactly. You understood the words that were coming out of my mouth, but you don't understand the pain that I had. You don't understand that. Mm. And, and, and so when somebody says, I've been there, mm -hmm. I've been there. That, there's something powerful about that because I remember in the Bible where it talks about, you know, Jesus, our God was like, hey, who shall we send? Mm. But the next part, I've, found, I, I, I've read it, I've heard it so, so many times, but this part God was really showing me who will go for us. 
Oh my God. Even in the military, our guys, you know, you can say, I ain't going. Yeah. Ain't. <laughs> oh, you want me to go? I ain't going there. <laughs> but who will go? We can send mm. everybody. We can put the yeah. camera out to go everybody. But who's going to go? Who's actually mm -hmm. going to go? And out the whole flock, one man, me. Mm. So the fact that you went through all this stuff, said, "Hey, you know what? I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not satisfied though. I'm not satisfied mm -hmm. with my children, myself making it. I'm not satisfied mm -hmm. with my children making it. I'm not satisfied with my children, children making it, which they clearly are to this day. I'm talking about my city. Mm. It said we're supposed to go to the world to, to to preach the gospel, but I don't think the gospel is the way what we speak. I think it's the gospel is the what we do." I think it's the guy yes. how we live and the light that shines through. I think that's what we need to. Do. And the fact that you're going back and say, "Hey, um, I, I see, I see an issue over here." Mm -hmm. How do you know you see an issue? Well, I was right here. Is that <laughs> I was in there? <laughs> I know the homelessness problem. I know there's yes. mothers that are yes. by themselves. I know that they're sick. I know that there's needy. I know that there's a need. I'm going to fulfill that need, job. It's. That that right there is is honestly what we need in this yeah. world, in our community as as the church, in the community as the black community, the community yes. as just our country. Like I'm in Canada, you're in America, but us, wherever we are, our neighbors beside us, but our neighbors over there in a in a in a postal code or zip code that you don't even know, in a in a city, in a place that you can't pronounce. It's yes. everywhere. We need to start spreading that light, man. And it's such a blessing that you not even finished. That you no. are, are you're not finished. That's the thing, though. You're, you're not finished. Like it, it's, it's no. a beautiful thing. It's a be oh man. Oh my goodness. Well, you know, Victor Frankel said in, in the book Search for a Meaning that some, once a man uh figure out the reason for his suffering his life then but has become has a deeper meaning to it and for me that was even when i started to write my books i wrote it in a holistic way so i could still reach the family in a in the family as a whole so i got my life story then i have four children's books where i'm teaching the little kids in the house about kindness and diversity and friendship then as a community advocate i wrote a four part youth series where I talk about um, sex trafficking, bullying, teen dating violence, love and forgiveness. Then I wrote a training manual so I can go do workshops so I can help uh, aid my sisters and brothers so they can change the narrative for their lives. And then I wrote a book for leaders, um, aspiring emerging leaders. So I'm, I'm just using every part of myself to to make an impact on, on, on whoever life I touch, whoever life I might not you know, see in person, but they can get the book. But even last year, when we first went on lockdown in April, I wanted a creative way to send a positive message. And that's when I created my first comic book, mm -hmm. um, The Light Shall Rule. So I'm just, I'm just using my gifts to build light in, in, in the world of darkness, to just talk about the love of God, just, and that's what I did. I'm like, I wrote a Christian comic book and I'm like, wow, you know, so I'm just, I'm just, as, as a um, disciple, mm -hmm. you know, you said something about the oil, I think before we got on or in the beginning, I learned the difference. There's a difference between being a, a when you walk with God mm -hmm. and you've been pressed and your all is your, see, like you said, it, it's one thing when you're a church member, you just go to church. It's something you do as, as a ritual. It's something you do mm -hmm. as a habit. Mm -hmm. But when you have been crushed and you've been on that potter's wheel, you walk different, you talk different, you don't even look at life the same. Mm -hmm. And so for me, when we was homeless, I saw that I never saw a U-Haul following a funeral procession line. And so I told my children, it's, all, it's okay to have nice things, just make sure the nice things don't have you. We cannot take anything with us on our deathbed. I will not be asking for my degrees. I will not be asking for the car driver. Let me take selfies in front of my house. All that would matter in the end when you're on your deathbed is your loved ones, those that are dear to you and closest to you. So I'm always telling my children, grandchildren, always focus on the things that are important. 
And I told them my legacy to my children and grandchildren is service to others. I personally believe that's the only thing that's actually going to have eternal weight to it is what you have done to for someone else. <sighs> Ain't that the truth, man? And we as a as a community, I think, have forgotten that we are not on an island by ourselves. Yeah. I think that we are, even for those that go to church, it's mm -hmm. a ritual. It's really, really yeah. Ritual. I think the church is is like a like a like an idol. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's it's an it's I did that. I'm good. Yes. I'm good. Yeah. Don't worry about <laughs> it. Like I I gave to the homeless guy in the street. I did that. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I gave my times and offerings. I did that. It ate ten percent and more. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't doing nothing more. The offering, like, is whatever spare change I got. You know, the 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 worship is like, hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, new song. Oh, in in the phone, just picking it up. Just oh yeah, um, praise the Lord. Oh, we're done, and not yeah. even there, right? And mm -hmm. and I love the scripture that says, "Be still, mm -hmm. and know that I am God, not you." Exactly. Not no situation, not this building, not these songs, not the worship leader, not the, the, the male or female that's standing up there preaching. Not no, not, <laughs> not your situation's not God, but I'm God. Mm. And, and, and we got to worship him more. But as for those that may, or may not be, um, you know, spirit filled, holy lit, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> like, we, we got to build up our community. We have to. Yes. It's yes. not something that we can sit back and say, oh, it's it's for Stacey and Susie down the street, you know? Street, that yeah. Scared, yeah. They could do their thing, you know? Oh, the block parents, oh, the whatever. That's for the older people. Mm -hmm. So what are we supposed to do? Just focus on money? <laughs> focus exactly. On my mortgage and focus on my car note and focus on my student loan. That's all we're supposed to focus on. I Yeah. It, it, it is sad because one thing I'm thankful for is COVID. Mm -hmm. We start to see people for people. Yes. And I'm sad that it had to come to this. Mm -hmm. But the same way, you know, sometimes we need to discipline our children. Yeah. God's got to be like, hey, hey, that's not just a bus driver. That's somebody's mama. Mm -hmm. That's not just a doctor. That's somebody's father. That's yeah. not just a teacher. That's somebody's daughter. That's not. Like, they're people, mm. and everybody from every demographic Muslims, Christians, Baptists, Jewish. It doesn't matter. Hindus, Sikhs. People were dying, and nobody cared what religion they fell in. Yeah. Nobody cared that they're a male, female, transgender, bi, gay. You know, haven't figured it out yet. People, plain yes. and simple, people are dying. Mm -hmm. And we got to realize that some more, you know? Don't yeah. push somebody in the bus or on the train or I'll look down on people. We're all in it together, man. You know, you may be, <laughs> that's right. You know, you may be a doctor, you may be a security guard, that's a bus driver, and that's a teacher. We all have hearts, we all have feelings, you know? Yes, yes. You know? And when you were going through that 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 pressing time, that crushing time, did, did you feel that you had a um, proverbial mask on, like everything's okay, or were you like, no, I'm jacked up right now, I'm just trying to get through my day, like I'm just telling you, like how, how was it then? I mean, I think I was pretty much transparent. I think. Um... Um, even when I was at school, because it, it, it was hard. I mean, even, you know, I shared in class. Um, yeah, even my kids, you know, they, they saw the depression. They saw, you know, it's interesting. My son, when I was running for city council in 2017, I got a call from my son. He was stationed in Tennessee. And when you get, when your kids get grown, they, you know, they call every now and then. So I was like, yeah, is there a problem? And his voice kind of got serious. And I was like, oh, my goodness, do you need me? And I'll never forget the call. He said, mother, 
would you do me the honors of coming to Tennessee to pin me at my promotion ceremony to Staff Sergeant Holden? At that moment, I started to cry because I was, because although I was no longer homeless, the residue, mm. sometimes we can still be out of the situation, but the residue was still there. Yes, ma'am. And I was like, son, I, I, why would you call me of all people? I thought you'd probably call my mom, my dad, my sisters. He was like, mother, Whoa. had it not been for you, mm. where would we have been? He said, I, I heard I heard you crying late at night, and, and I know the family member was laughing at you. He said, but you kept going. Mm. And because you kept going, that's how I was able to make it through the Marine boot camp. He said, yes, ma'am, would you do me the honors? to come to Tennessee to pin me at my ceremony. And I just would never forget that call. And I mean, when I went down there to pin him at that ceremony in front of his comar you know, uh, the comrades and everybody, I tell you, um, God just have allowed me to see some very significant moments within the last 12 years. Mm. And I I'm just still at, a, you know, when American Mothers Inc, American Mothers Inc is a national organization that started 85 years ago around the Eisenhower President Eisenhower time where his wife, and I think some women of that era, they started, they get nominations around the world and they will choose one parent, one mother to represent that individual state. And then out of the 50 plus women that they chose, they would choose one of them to become national mother and that person makes history. So for God to have chosen me to be Georgia mother of the year and national mother of the year last year, now take this, it, last year was the year all of my children had hit 18 and over. It's almost like when you have been on your job 30 years and you're about to retire, they give you the dinner, they give you the plaque, the watch. Yes, For me, that was my thing from God that said, well done, well mm -hmm. done. And um, that, like you said, that honor there to be, na to be nationally recognized in the area where I felt a failure, the area where I felt like I wasn't good enough, but I just gave my kids the only key that I possess, and that was service to others. And that key, they took it and ran with it. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a have to. The one time I'm probably have to have to have to say no. Nah, I don't. I disagree. I, I got to <laughs> because that that's not the key. That's mm. not the key. That the key is not giving up. It is mm. regardless of what the situation is is get, helping others most definitely that's what you that's that's the one thing that you wanted to show but the one thing that you showed is doesn't matter stay true to your goals doesn't matter you stick for you keep going because boot camp you know you that ain't that ain't a ooh, you know some <laughs> other thing that's like a yeah. <laughs> we gotta get through this <laughs> i don't know about you guys <laughs> i'm gonna get to the end okay <laughs> but you get what i'm saying right it's it's yeah. It's what you did every day. It's the faithfulness that you had to them, to God, to your purpose, to, to yourself. You know what I mean? Understanding that, listen, I really, you could have gone and picked up a job. You know, yeah. you could have picked up a, you know, a job, become a supervisor, then a manager and worked your way up the ladder. But you said, even though I'm in this situation, I, I, my expectations are up here. So you said you were like, "Yo, y'all, y'all, my children with my name." Mm -mm. <laughs> expectations. Y'all got my name. Under <laughs> Man, I think people under don't don't understand what the weight what names carry. Yeah, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. And when you put yourself saying, "I'm homeless. I'm a single mother. I'm jobless, but I'm I'm finna be a doctor." Mm -hmm. I'm going to be known around the world. I'm damn sure going to be known in my city. My community mm -hmm. going to know exactly who I am. And if you don't know, I'm going to let you know. <laughs> All this, that, those nights where he, you know, he saw you crying on the floor, probably praising God. Give mm -hmm. him. This is the, 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 the things that, that gave him the strength to be a surgeon. That means he's a leader himself. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like, like Marines underneath him that, uh, yeah. but they're not underneath him. They're underneath you. Mm. Your tutelage of your dis um, discipleship of, of him, because all that time he was watching. He was going through pain too. He's seeing his blood yeah. pressing. He's seeing this, but she doesn't give up. 
She, mm. She's not going. She ain't going nowhere. She she going to love on me. She going she mm -hmm. gonna, gonna discipline me, but I still know she loves me. She gonna make yes. sure my studies done. She gonna make sure I'm on the right thing. She knows what I'm doing. Oh my goodness! I'm in a middle class neighborhood where there's a, there's a there's a school like two minutes walk from me. I see on the regular parents go outside in a middle class neighborhood. Gangs not around here. None of that stuff. No drive by. Mm -hmm. no, crazy parents. Billy, <laughs> where Billy at? Where, where my son? Daughter? Where's my daughter? What you mean you don't know where your daughter is? Mm. But you know where your child is. It, now, just oh. if y'all don't know, run down, broken down buildings, homes are not in the affluent neighborhoods, okay? Mm -hmm. Probably not in the middle class neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. These are the, the Section 8 area, you know, in, in yeah. Toronto, we would call them Toronto housing here. Mm -hmm. So it, these are the, the, the gang banging areas. These are drug you know, areas. These are where, you know, prostitution is. This is, this is that area. And I still, you still know where your child is after I'm going to mm. university, after I'm studying, after I'm doing all this stuff. My God, the, it was it wasn't the service to others. That was maybe the the standing out thing to your head. But them times, there's a song I can't remember the words words, but it says, um, "I'm I'm doing just like you, Daddy." You know, mm. when the, when the, it was a it's a country song, and yeah, my brother loves me because some country, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it said, my four-year-old said a four-letter word. And he asked his son, where did you learn that? I'm going to be just like you, daddy. Mm. Later that night, he, he went in the room and he seen his son get on, the, get on the floor on his knees, close his hands, bow his head and say, Father God. He said, son, where did you learn that? He said, I learned from you, daddy. He said he went to college, university, got a degree in education. He said, son, why didn't you stop? Why didn't you give up? Because I learned from you, daddy. It is not mm. what we say on a daily basis. It's how we do. It's how we live. So you on that crushing floor, you you with those, those tears weeping down your face, you with the pen to the paper, you with the books open front, you with the with the daylight coming and having gone to sleep, you with hugs around them, you with, with, with bound down to say, God, watch over my children because I can't do it all by myself. You mm. say, hey, I can't do it right now. God is all... It, it, Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Oh, uh, you put me in mind. What my my undergrad professor told the class one time that the world belongs to those who are disciplined. And so for me, the, I learned the art of discipline while we was homeless. That's how I was able to write. I think I wrote twelve books within a year and a half. But I had learned. Yes, no, no. After homeless, after after we was home, but I had learned the art. Year and a half, twelve books. Yeah, well, homeless four years, then I, you know, college, city council, then I start writing books. And, um, but I had learned the art of discipline, you know. So the, the homelessness, that wilderness experience, really, people don't know, but that's a valuable place. It's a painful place to be in, but it's a valuable place that God is, that's your training ground. For me, I was in a, that was my spiritual boot camp, you know. Uh, but I had learned the necessary tools to be a servant leader, um, uh, one that transforms and inspires others on their journey to change the narrative. And so I started Phoenix Rising last year, where I do inspirational speaking, workshops, empowerment coaching, where I'm empowering others that they have the power to rewrite their story. And so I'm, I'm just, again, I'm, I, you know, um, it's a blessing. It's, but I do tell people this. God did not magically change my life. I had to be a willing participant in my own deliverance. He didn't He didn't magically come and write books for me. He didn't magically put me through school. He didn't magically run for, run for city council. So I had to put the work in and trust him. The best thing I could have ever done was bet on myself and uh, and believe how he saw me. And so I'm just glad I took a chance on myself and said, you know what, God? I know everybody's laughing at me. I'm homeless. Even nobody. I'm born and raised here in Atlanta. And I had no family members help me when I ran for city council. And I don't think they really thought I would be on this side of the fence. <laughs> but I just I try to tell people once you've been crushed and once you have walked through your wilderness experience, 
you no longer cares about who who stands with you, who supports you. I'm on a goal. I have a mission. My goal and my mission, and, and I tell people, whoever's listening, when you're running your race, put your blinders on. You don't need to see what the runner to the right is doing, what the runner to the left. My goal is to run my race. So at the end of my journey, I can hear, well done, that good and faithful servant. And so for me, I'm just running my race as, as best as I can. And uh, so, yeah, I'm just excited. And I'm really excited now. Everybody, you know, my last job to graduate high school in May. Hey, so a lot of stuff that I didn't do. I, I definitely got a bucket list now that I'm, I'm ready to go and start showing some love to myself. <laughs> hey, hey now, hey now. Now, j- just before we wrap up here is, if you would look at a sister in your situation that don't got mama, daddy, you know, for whatever reason, they, they're they not there. They're, they're with their child, you know, belly all nice and beautifully round and they're mixed with the feeling though. They're mixed with this feeling that I love what's happening in Mm -hmm. here. But Mm -hmm. out here, I'm not loving what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. I I don't know who I am. I don't know where I'm going. I love this, but I don't know if this is right for this. And I don't I don't know. What would you have for that person that's just like, hey, you know what? I don't know. And maybe going into the hospital and saying, I don't want to do it no more. Mm. Well, the first thing I would say that, first of all, nothing in your life is by mistake. Um, everything. God is going to use everything, the good, the bad, and ugly. But my thing is this. No one, the painful truth is, no one is coming to save you but you. You got it. Every, everything you need to succeed, believe me, is if, if, if is in you. If, if God could take and I think that's why my story is being told around the world. If God can, because he's trying to let people know. See, the world will have you thinking that you need what man has to offer in order for God to do what he's going to do in your life. The world will have you thinking mm-hmm. if you're not connected, if you don't, if you're not a part of this group or this, this organization, if you don't have this money, you don't live in this certain zip code, but God is taking a form of homeless woman <laughs> mm-hmm. to tell the people. If I can do it for an African-American woman in a big metropolitan city like Atlanta, mm. and she's 35 years old with a GED. Now, 35 years old, you're, you're pretty, you're grown, grown. <laughs> and, 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 you, know, you, you, you know, you're not a child. So if I can do it with a 35-year-old African-American woman with six children, with a GED, no money, no family support, and I can turn her life around, the thing is, Nothing happens overnight. You got to be. And see, that's the thing. We we give up. Had God told me 12 years ago, daughter, you're going to be homeless for four years. People going to. Had he told me that, I probably would have tried to do something else and, and try to work stuff out. Whoever you are, I guarantee you, like, like, like Bryce said earlier, this is not something I'm saying because I don't know. And I'm just trying to say I understand. If God can bring, do what he's done for me. Mm-hmm. He definitely has a plan for you. Please keep going. Will it hurt if you keep going? You probably have to cry some more nights. <laughs> you, I, I'm just going to keep it real. You probably want to, because see, when, uh, when, you're on a, when you're taking a test, he's silent. But that's when you got to trust him. He's there. I guarantee you. The, the, the night I, He is there. Mm-hmm. All he wants you to do, trust him. Take a step and you'll just start. It's almost like a dance. It's almost like you're in a love dance when when you take a step, he take two, and you just start to see your path unfold. Do not give up. Right before your breakthrough is usually when most people give up. Keep going. Don't give up. You know. You know. Keep pushing, and I guarantee you, you will see the light at the end of the tunnel. Hey. Amen to that. Amen to that. And I, I don't know if I address you properly. Is Doctor, but is it ambassador doctor or the doctor ambassador? You know, like <laughs> well, ambassador is is um I, I received ambassadorship in humanitarianism. Um I started community clauses here, low income schools, um, events I've done. So that's 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 a title I receive as for my humanitarian work. But right. Dr. Latarsha is fine, it's fine. <laughs> yes, man. Yes, man. Well, this is what I ask every guest to do at the end. 
is to state your name and say, I am a victor. I am Dr. Latarsha Holden, and I am a victor. Praise God, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. If any, that was that that's a that's that fed my spirit. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna definitely um, put all your um, information down in the description. Okay. So everybody can go and and check it out. All your books uh, are they are all on um, Amazon or um, on your yes, website? they're on they're on Amazon. But if you want an autograph copy, you can go on my website and I will mail an autograph copy to you. But all of my books are on Amazon except for my comic book. My comic book is the only thing that you can get from my website. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. We'll definitely put the links there. Ma'am, thank you again. Have yourself a wonderful day. Thank you for having me. For sure, for sure. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful.